Good night. It's late here. I uh, want to conclude my, I did two very long um, videos today regarding some more of the things that I went through with my narcissistic sociopathic husband, who I did love, but I recognized um, enough into the marriage that I was married to someone who uh, was a pathological liar, liar, did many, many bad things, and became very cruel to me in things he would say. I didn't go into all the the details. I covered enough. I also didn't talk about my concern for my children and my the responsibility that I felt for... Um, how their dad was. And um, they knew at the time they had blocked it, which they need to keep blocked. It's just keep it blocked. Um, I did try to warn them not long ago. You know, just consider yourself warned and didn't go in. I never say anything about what. Um, and I recognize the weight and the sorrow for them of what they went through. Not having a dad while they were growing up because they remembered enough then. Uh, or, you know, they felt the security of where we had moved and uh, safety and their lives went along. <clears throat> But everyone wants to be able to feel good about their dad. But sadly, that person is a sick person who gave over to evil within in little treacherous, tricky ways and uh, wanted me dead. He said so. And the police felt that there was a, uh, the deputies felt there was a problem, a danger for that. And God felt it, and that's how God, I probably will talk about at some point, the miracle of court and what happened in court that we miraculously, the judge let us leave and move 2,200 miles away. When other things in court had gone against me, he had convinced the CPS worker, etc. So um, it's not just the adult it's more the children that get hurt by this. However, I'm trusting in God. I gave my, I prayed and prayed for them all through and still do, for health and for wonderful lives and not to suffer. I didn't want them to suffer. <clears throat> and I used up money. I had gotten a little money from, not much, from the uh, car accident. And I didn't get much because he also uh, called the lawyer for the kid who hit me, hit us. And, of course, mine would have been a, a very big settlement. But he offered to testify against me and lied to the boy's lawyer, a kid who hit me, and my lawyers found out and it it really reduced our case terribly. Um, and so I had to give in. I didn't get much to rear our, my children. I used up everything I had and then my and my parents helped pay. So just so you know, the evil that goes into people, the evil, um, how people will agree to do terrible things to other people for who knows what reason, sick, unhealthy persons. So I do pray that people be very careful and pick up on the little clues and act on them. But 
uh, you know, of course, I've been to psychologists, and it's very difficult to know it. Uh, so you get to the point where you, if if your children ever do realize, reassure them that it was nothing really that they could have changed. The parent needs to forgive themselves and understand that um, this happened and it was a, a terrible problem, a horrible personality disorder. And then try to move on with life. And after I went through some of those things, the highlights, I guess, not the nitty-gritty of the awful stuff that kept going on, but enough of it. And accept, I've always accepted my responsibility. And uh, But I also loved because I was capable and brought up and could love spiritually others. And this person I was married to couldn't love in that way. And evil entered in. But very successful, and um, kids can look up to that. And they do, I think, that he's successful and has money. And um, I want them to find good. I do want them to protect themselves, but that's up to them. My job is finished, and I, you know, if we could say how sorry we are to the depth we are sorry, um, it's just not even possible to express that. But I did find scriptures. I went back to scriptures. I also became very ill after the second video and um, very, very nauseated. I've been down on the bed with heat pack on me <laughs> and um, very sick feeling. And I'm praying that a lot of what I got out is going to help and that I can put it all away. I think in part with my adult children, I remind them of what we went through and they don't want to be reminded. So um, <clears throat> from Romans 13, in coming back as I did this evening, uh, thinking about loving as God loves, and what it requires. Here was scripture from Romans 13, 8 to 10. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. There we are back to learning to love as God loves, which means to love one another. Owe nothing else but to love, to come back to love over and over. The verses continue, the commandment, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be <clears throat> are... Um, summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> love does no evil to thy neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. And then in the psalm that I saw today, this evening, um, blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. That's delighting in God, delighting in learning to love, delighting into living this commandment that Jesus keeps repeating is the most important, to love. And the greatest commandment elsewhere is <clears throat> to love God above all things and to love others as we love ourselves. And that means to love others as God loves us. So um, there was one other thing 
that I found uh, very helpful, and it was in the breviary. Um, well, there was a scripture from Luke 14, 25 to 33, and it also talked about who can be Jesus' disciple. And it's to carry our own cross. Whoever can carry our own cross and come after him, come after God or Jesus, that's what we are to do. Um, and to, in some way, try to rid ourselves of our possessions. And that doesn't just mean temporal possessions. In fact, it means more the inner, the spiritual possession. Not, not the good spiritual possession, but the, the inner things that we carry with us, such as my agonizing all these years and feeling terrible for my children and what I had been a part of and had a terrible time trying to get us out of and how I had duped myself and been duped by someone who did do evil. And I wasn't aware of it. I let a lot, one big lie pass, and then many other lies I learned to ignore to keep a family together. At what price? And we did get out. <clears throat> But my little boy never had a dad in the home, and he yearned to have a dad, even though he knew about his dad growing up. But as an adult, that desire for his dad and his dad being temporally successful and wealthy and a charming, the dad could dupe him as an adult and has. So... <clears throat> We have to forgive ourselves and to um, not carry the possession of our upset with us also. Any kind of baggage, Jesus says, get rid of all your possessions before we can follow him. Being possessive of anything that isn't healthy, that isn't right, that's a vice. Get rid of all our vices. And yes, get rid of things in the temporal world that we are attached to that get us in our way or drag us down or that we have excess of. Excess clothing, excess whatever. Um, even money, if we have lots of money, then help the poor. And I used to try to tithe I'm in a position right now where I can't even do that. And I feel guilty, but that's a possession. God knows my situation now. So he isn't, you know, saying, just get rid of all your whatever you have left and somehow something's going to come along to pay your bills or to pay what I owe Home Depot for the building supplies in here. Um, no. Or the money that I have in savings to pay property taxes and my IRS taxes and all the extra that I need each month because my income's so low, it doesn't. That was something my, ex, my husband at the time had done. Very tricky. Had me uh, sell, sell down my my own retirement account to pay off his car payment while we were still married. And that's what my disability was based on then. My little low retirement of just two and a half years of teaching after the divorce. So that's why I have such a very, very low income. Had I had all my other years of teaching, it would have been based on that, which would have given me a higher income. So God understands these things. So, but I think, you know, we have to look at possessions that we carry with us through life. Um, blaming our parents who are deceased even or who are still alive. All of those things can become like possessions. They possess us. 
these these negative thoughts or um, blaming ourselves to the point where we um, even going or, and and holding on to these memories that getting it out on in this format made me literally ill and I still am um, it's God wants us to be freed of that. We can't follow, we can't love as God loves when we have all this negative baggage that we have carried with us, possessions like that. And that includes possessions we don't need, yes. But um, too much food, all, gluttony, um, greed, um, coveting what other people have, envy. All these things are possessions that possess us, that hold, will hold us back from loving as God loves. So um, that's another aspect of, as it said here, you know, the, the delight to love, to have a genuine delight of loving God. And we prepare ourselves for that. And then here was another thing that was in the divine office, uh, a little statement. If you don't lose your supernatural outlook, or, yeah, if you don't lose your supernatural outlook, in other words, we must keep our supernatural outlook, you will crown your work. We will succeed in loving as God loves and in any supernatural endeavor. We will crown that work if we do not lose our spiritual, our supernatural outlook. So that's all I have to say. This is even sort of long. God bless his real presence in us. And um, I'll be back to doing hopefully um, more beneficial and discussing little things that I'm learning as I go along during the day or that might be of help. And I know that Noah wanted me to talk about uh, the mystical ecstasies that I had. I'll explain mystical events and things that will be um, of interest, but also of some sort of benefit. Um, God bless his real presence in us. Let us continue to delight in learning to love as God loves.